Hello, uh, welcome back to a very quick video. I've not done one of these for quite a while, so um, I thought we'd come back and show you how to make liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Uh, it seems to be a very topical thing at the moment now that we've got the new rockets on the space industry upgrade. Um, and it's actually easier than ever to make liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Uh, we now have some new ingredients added to the game, one of which being super coolant. Um, and the other being steel and niobium and all these other cool materials. Now the benefit of super coolant is that it allows us to create um, very cold temperatures without fear of freezing, um, which means that we can now make liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen um, with a fairly, a fairly precise band of, of, of error really. So we have a little bit of leeway in, in terms of making it. We've always been able to make liquid oxygen for a very long time. Liquid hydrogen uh, is, is now going to become a more commonplace ingredient because of super coolant um, and steel and these other materials as I mentioned. So just a quick rundown of this build, what this basically is, we've got a couple of aqua tuners in the room and we're using the steam turbine, uh, turbine above them to actually cool the aqua tuners. Now this is a build we've been using for all sorts of stuff in our recent playthrough on Twitch. Um, ever since steel became an ingredient it's made it so that aqua tuners can actually go up to a much higher temperature, actually 325 degrees I believe. Um, these are actually made out of niobium which is one of the other new materials which can go up to 625 degrees. Um, they don't need to be, they can be made out of steel if you've not got that far into space yet. Um, but the beauty of this is that these, these aqua tuners can generate enough heat to run our steam turbine. The beauty of the steam turbine is it actively deletes a massive amount of heat. So the way that this basically works, we've just got a bit of steam in the room. And when you first start this up, you just have a bit of water on the, on the floor basically. And as your aqua tuners heat up, they eventually boil the liquid and make steam. Okay, Your steam continues to get hotter and hotter and hotter which allows your steam turbine to eventually toggle up like this is doing now okay when it does that it pumps out a load of steam out the top that's far far cooler as you can see it's cooling down the steam that steam then gets cycled back in and that is technically cooling our aqua tuners now this is a commonplace build a lot of people are using this at the minute it's a great new mechanic that we've got to play within the game um, although I've seen a lot of people making monstrous huge builds and I'm sort of showing you here now that you don't really need to go, go so big on this. So what we've got behind here in terms of piping, we've got some uh, radiant liquid pipe made out of thermium. Now thermium is another new material. It's quite plentiful, you can get quite a lot of it. So you can make your radiant pipes out of it without much fear of running out of the stuff. The rest of the piping in this is all ceramic. Okay, and ceramic again, by the time you get to late game, is a very easy material to get lots of. So, just to explain one of these loops, they're, they're identical loops, just a little bit differently laid out. We have a reservoir in the room, and in this reservoir we've got a little bit of additional coolant. Okay, so in this one it's 140 kilos of coolant, and I'll explain what that's for in a minute. Now, on the output of the reservoir, it goes into our aqua tuner, and there's a pipe sensor on this section of pipe here. All this pipe sensor is doing is telling the aqua tuner to turn off if the temperature gets too high or too low, basically. So if the temperature goes uh, below minus 205, I want my aqua tuner to be toggled off. I don't want it to, to run anymore. I want it to be inactive, otherwise it'll freeze, freeze my liquid oxygen. It'll turn it solid. Okay. So at which point, if that toggles off, it toggles off my aqua tuner and allows my coolant to carry on past my aqua tuner which you can actually see happening now. It goes to this bridge, and then it goes into the output pipe. If it turns on, it'll do like what this one's doing here. It'll just go straight through the aqua tuner and out the green exit. And that gives us a constantly flowing loop. All right? Now, the benefit of the reservoir up here is the reservoir's got a little bit of coolant inside it. Now, reservoirs don't interact with heat so they don't interact with the steam that's in the room. This is also built out of niobium. It could be built out of steel again. Um, they don't interact with the, the, the room at all, so they don't change the temperature of their contents, no matter how hot it is in here. It's it's crazy hot in here. But the, the supercoolant will still maintain this temperature. Now, the benefit of having this little buffer is that the supercoolant can balance out so in our pipes, if you look, we've got a range of temperatures from minus 206 to minus 205, 205, 205.3, 205.8, 204.8. It's all go always going to fluctuate because we're constantly pushing additional gas into the room. Okay, and I've not done this with any sort of shutoffs. This is just a constant feed of gas through a high pressure vent if the room can take it. Okay. And what that means is we want to make sure that our supercoolant isn't spiking too much in temperature. So my way of getting around that 
is to have it flow into a reservoir which balances out the temperature as it comes in. So you'll see there's not as much spike in it, sort of a couple of degrees here, well, a point, point of a degree um, margin, really. It's not, it's not a huge reduction or change in temperature. Now, this becomes more useful when we start looking at our liquid hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen has a much smaller window between being liquid and being gaseous and being solid. Okay, so it, it, it really is a useful method of balancing out your temperatures a little bit to prevent those spikes in, in, um, in change, really. So same is, is applied in here. We've got 140 kilos of supercoolant, and you'll see it varies by, you know, point of a degree rather than fluctuating massively, you know, a couple of degrees here and there. So this is a really nice way of averaging out your temperatures, avoiding those spikes and avoiding any freezing in the rooms. Now, um, in terms of getting the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen to the, the actual rocket, all I've got is a very simple loop for my pipe. Again, all this piping is just with ceramic, dead easy to do. And all this does, it goes from our pipe, goes into the rocket, and then if the rocket's filled up, it bypasses and goes down here, at which point I just toggle off the switches. Okay, so all I do is I manually toggle these on, the liquid flows in, up the pipe, around and back in simple as that so i think these are actually ready to go so we could actually launch this rocket if we wanted to um let's just launch it and that's it basically guys um it's really pretty straightforward there's not much to it um the liquid loop couldn't be any easier the automation couldn't be any easier and the power behind it is just a heavy watt wire um when my game wakes up which again couldn't be any easier so I hope that helps. Uh, for those of you that have been struggling with it, it is, it's actually a lot easier than it's ever been. Uh, if you want to, you can pre-cool your gas a little bit. I've got a little radiator down here with some wheeze warts. That's taking my gas from 38 degrees to minus 33 degrees. Um, hydrogen to foot from 49 to minus 29. Um, you can make this obviously as big as you want. If you've got an AETN nearby, you can use one of those to cool it even further. I just basically threw this together with what I had. Um, so yeah, any questions, please feel free to ask. Come and find me on Twitch uh, or post in the comments below. But yeah, much love guys. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.